Oh my god. Oh my god! Don't you sometimes wish that you could get your morning coffee delivered by a drone? The future is here. I'm joking, this is actually tea and I'm drinking it because I have the virus, you know. You know what I'm talking about. <coughs> The DJI FPV drone is finally here and in this video I am going to cover all the details you could possibly think of. From the most frequently asked questions about it, as well as some details that people don't even think to ask, like uh, how good of a coffee does it actually make. You can check the specs in the description of this video as well as a link to an article with an infographic with all the details compared to a regular FPV drone to get an idea about it. But quickly, let me tell you that this drone comes with a 4K FPV camera that's electronically stabilized. Can reach speeds of 140 km per hour and can fly for up to 20 minutes or hover for 16 minutes. The controller has a so-called stop button, which I would personally call the I fucked up emergency button. And it seems it can actually solve every problem you have. Do you think your wife talks too much? Emergency button. Do you want to stop time and fart in your boss's face? Emergency button. Oh wait, that's a different movie. Actually what it does is that it stops the drone in place and lets it hover on the spot. No matter if the drone is upside down, if you're flying at really high speeds or if you're about to hit your mother-in-law with the drone, but you have a change of heart. And by the way, leave a comment down below if you know the name of the previous movie. Now, we know that the DJI FPV drone comes in a package with the DJI FPV goggles version 2, a remote controller, which is also new, a battery and some accessories like cables and such. But the question is, can you buy these separately? Yes, you can in fact buy these separately from a certain section of the DJI shop. It's not so easy to find, but I have left a link down in the description for it. You can get the FPV version 2 controller, the drone and goggles all separately, although the package with all of them together is slightly cheaper. This sparks the next question. Do the old DJI FPV goggles version 1 work with the new FPV drone? The short answer is no. At the current time, only the version 2 of the FPV goggles work with the new FPV drone. That is because they do have a different menu and different antennas which are multiband, working in both 2.4 GHz and in 5.8. And this allows for a longer range in total. However, what if you have the old DJI FPV unit like I do right here, and maybe want to use the new DJI FPV goggles with another drone? In this case, you are lucky, because the new FPV goggles actually work with the old system, but not the other way around. However, since the antennas of the goggles themselves are both 2.4 and 5.8 GHz, so multiband, you will get a slightly lower range from the DJI FPV Air unit. But you can always buy some aftermarket 5.8 GHz antennas for it and everything will be solved. DJI has actually changed the menu setup in the new goggles to work with the new FPV drone. However, you can also change it to the old FPV menu for the Air unit from a setting in the menu. Speaking of the goggles, the new DJI FPV drone comes with OcuSync 3.0, which they named now O3, for ease of use I guess. And that means the drone can fly up to 10 km and keep the light feed intact. The DJI FPV drone has more than just GPS. It also has Galileo and GLONASS here. And I'm not talking about some type of glowing gas here. It's in fact the GPS satellite equivalent for Russia and Europe. And all of these work in tandem to connect it to a shit ton of satellites. You know, like the ones used for the internet connection to provide you the ability to hit the like button on this video and help with the YouTube algorithm. Another really important and frequently asked question is if it does come with focus tracking. Well, it doesn't. In fact, it doesn't come with any of the typical DJI flight modes, besides return to home and auto landing. This drone isn't made for things like that, but I would like to add that it could be just a matter of updating the software to do that and I think it could be quite cool if they did. Now the big question that is in the heads of everyone. Can this drone be fixed or repaired at home at any extent? The DJI FPV drone can be partially fixed at home because there are some parts that will be available to buy, like the ones you can see now on the screen. The biggest of them all is the camera and gimbal module. However, this is far from being able to completely repair it on your own like the typical FPV quads 
that are made from easily replaceable parts. The internals are quite complex and are not really made now for replacement and ease of access. Now, the best way to make sure you don't crash it is to learn to fly properly. And just like I predicted in my past videos, DJI has actually made an in-app FPV simulator, which is actually pretty great. In the past, I had to buy my own simulators and had a pretty difficult time connecting them to the controllers, learning the ins and outs and so on. However, this is very simple to do. I could frankly say that after a couple of hours of flying in acro mode, you are confident enough to try it in real life. I know that because that is my own story with FPV drones. I did crash a few times after a while after I got a bit more speed, but we'll talk about crashing in another video. And here's another interesting thing you can do in the simulator. You can actually play it even without having the new DJI FPV drone. It has sticks on the screen which you can actually use or just get the controller by itself first to learn how to fly. Now, regarding the sensors, I always had my doubts that they could actually make usable obstacle avoidance sensors in such a fast-moving drone. And unfortunately, I was right. These sensors are pretty much useless. It does have two forward-facing sensors, two bottom-facing ones, and also two other depth-of-field sensors at the bottom. I would say the sensors at the bottom are definitely useful for landing. However, the ones in the front, not so much. They work only in end mode where you don't even actually need them since you're flying too slow and they work by showing some red or orange bars at the top where obstacles might be in front of you. The drone doesn't stop when nearing an obstacle, it just slows down a bit and lets you know. Since these sensors are basically disabled in sport or manual mode, which are the only modes you'll be flying in, they are pretty much going to be useful only when you learn the basics of flying. One of the coolest things the new software of the drone does is showing you the home point. Wait a minute, where do you call home? Oh yeah, you've never seen it. Come on, let's show you. And that is the home point. Does the DJI FPV drone have CE Europe certification and what does that mean? Unfortunately, these new versions do not have it. The European certification means that the drone can pass some tests in regards to the new European laws and can actually legally fly farther and so on. Unfortunately, these new versions of the drone do not have it. Maybe in the future, who knows. In terms of video, you also have full control of the camera parameters like shutter speed, ISO and so on. This means that this FPV quadcopter is made to entirely replace the GoPros and action cams that pilots usually use on top of their FPV drones to take amazing shots. I haven't yet seen any ND filters on these, but I'm sure that companies like PGI Tech or Freewell will make some very soon. Now, on some more serious stuff, can it detect airplanes? Land in the mountains, we would ask that you uh, please refrain from resorting to cannibalism. Uh, we have plenty of food to last all of us through the winter. Yes, it does come with an ADS-B receiver and marks incoming aircraft on the screen, which makes it really useful and quite secure if you want to fly at higher altitudes maybe, capable so nobody's gonna track you, as it doesn't have an ADS-B transmit, only receiving. So I would say your flight records are safe, unless DJI screws us all without telling. And yeah, leave a, leave a comment down below if you think DJI is trustworthy or not. But how fast is this drone in fact? Well, the FPV drone from DJI has three modes of operation with different speeds associated with each and some very different behavior between them. The first one is N mode, which is normal, where the drone behaves more like a standard DJI GPS drone and can fly at 54 km per hour or 34 miles per hour max. The second one is S mode and comes from sport mode, but somehow this actually isn't the fastest. It still has limitations, as in you can't do flips and the turns are corrected by the software, so it's still beginner's mode. This allows you to do 97 km per hour or 60 miles per hour, which is quite a lot. But the maximum at which you can fly this is the M mode, for manual or manuel. Miguelito or Madagascar, which can get you to a whopping 140 km per hour, that being 87 miles per hour, which is completely insane and on par with some of the fastest and best drones out there, especially considering how heavy this drone is. Also, you should know that this drone can reach 100 km per hour or 60 miles per hour in just 2 seconds, 
which is basically faster than any car out there, considering that the Tesla Model 3 performance can get there in about 3.5 seconds. Just imagine that. Ok, if you want to see all these cool specs and more, check the description down below for my article where I have a nice infographic with all of this or the link with even more detailed specs on the DJI site itself. Can it do flips in the manual mode? DJI took extra caution with the M manual Miguelito mode, so it's not pressed by mistake by someone who has only flown Mavics and then crashed right away. There is a setting in the goggles where you can disable the M mode at the limit, so you can actually fly in full speed acro mode and yeah, do flips and all of that. Auto land, auto take off and return to home. And yes, this drone does need to have all of these to make the experience much more safe because it is quite fragile and expensive. In FPV, most times accidents happen are when actually trying to land. So it pretty much lands the drone by itself in GPS mode safely like any other Mavic out there. But this time it looks more like a flying sexy coffee machine. While you can't find the standard flight modes as in the typical DJI drone, like follow me or waypoints or even orbit mode, this time you can still use cruise control and I must say it's pretty useful. You hit the start and stop button and it maintains the exact same speed the entire time. And you just control the drone with the left stick while only adjusting the maximum speed on the right stick. One important thing that you should know is that you can actually control most of the settings and things from the goggles themselves. No really need to get in the app frankly. Things like resolution in which is recording, video format and transmission quality. And by the way, for some reason right now if you choose the lower quality transmission on the goggles, it can only record in 1080p on the drone. No idea how these are connected but I just wanted to tell you. You may have seen some videos online showing some propellers in the frame. However, what you should know is that the propellers only show in the frame when the drone is hovering. And most of the videos you are gonna take... That is my cat in the background, yeah. If you're flying at a regular or higher speed, the props won't show at all. Now, talking about stabilization, it's composed of two systems. One being a one-axis gimbal that stabilizes the camera up and down and also allows you to move the angle of the camera in flight, something we have never seen in a regular FPV drone. And the electronic image stabilization, which is basically the same technology as the Osmo Action camera with its rock steady stabilization. You can actually disable this feature if you want, it's a setting in the goggles. The DJI FPV drone can take anywhere between minus 10 degrees Celsius and 40 degrees Celsius, that is 14 to 104 degrees Fahrenheit. And that is pretty good compared to other drones, which pretty much can't handle sub-zero temperatures. However, keep in mind that the battery life will substantially decrease if you fly the drone in colder climates. One of the best ways to raise the temperature of the batteries is to actually hit the thumbs up on this video to keep the YouTube algorithm from freezing my channel. Another thing that you should take note of is that the camera doesn't look straight down anymore. It's limited to a 50 degree angle now, so no more bird's eye view shots. Can you change the EXP rates? Yes, you can change the gains directly from the goggles with no additional software needed. You can change the roll, pitch and your rates to whatever you please. Yes, you can actually get DJI Care Refresh for it. And I strongly recommend getting it as this is the drone that mostly needs the DJI Refresh as it's the most prone to damage. Already seen YouTubers like Joshua Bardwell, which is a pretty expert pilot in my opinion, already crashed a drone in his first few days. The DJI Care for this drone is a bit more expensive than the others, however I think it's well worth it. You have a link in the description if you're curious. The DJI FPV drone does come with quick release and install props. Just press down on it, turn and it's all done. This is helpful since you might actually damage these in flight more often than a Mavic and changing them without the need for tools is great in the field. The controller also comes with a custom programmable three-way button that can pretty much do whatever you want. For the drone battery, the charging itself can take about an hour or so. However, for the battery of the remote controller, it can take up to 2.5 hours. However, keep in mind that it can last for 9 hours of active use, so I think it's pretty much worth it. If you want to put the drone in FPV mode, where the left throttle stick actually doesn't go to the middle by itself, you will need to loosen some screws in the back of it and then you get the standard setup for any other FPV drone out there. The DJI FPV drone does come with a super useful feature called Find My Drone, which basically allows you to play the last 30 seconds of footage from the goggles, so you can pinpoint the location where you lost the drone. 
And now this is where it gets interesting, because I know how many of you wanted some HDMI out from the previous version of the goggles. Now the version 2 of the goggles allows something like that, but it's not HDMI out. You can actually transfer the live feed from them with a USB cable to either a phone or a tablet so everybody else can see, without having to spend a fortune on another pair of FPV goggles. But what's the difference between the new version 2 FPV goggles and the older version 1? The new ones work on both 2.4 as well as 5.8 GHz and that makes the DJI FPV drone go really far. The new goggles also have an 810p resolution versus the 720p resolution of the old ones, which is slightly better. And the refresh rate is much higher at 144Hz compared to the 100Hz of the version 1. The DJI FPV drone does actually come with this in a like, which is a flat color profile which allows you more freedom in post-processing when it comes to colors, as well as get more details from the image itself. So I actually recommend you film in this mode every time. Remember that the 10km range is in FCC mode. That means countries like the United States, Canada, Australia, China and a few more. However, if you are from Europe, you will only be able to fly 6 km. Not like the regulation allows that, but just so you know. The new OcuSync 3.0 is called O3, and besides the 10 km range, it also has a very low latency. I really wish we could use the goggles with the DJI Mini or the Mavic Air 2. The prop guards you can buy are kind of a joke. You can actually get prop guards for the DJI FPV drone, and they might be helpful for beginners, and especially if you decide to fly indoors. But I don't think they do a great deal when flying at 140 km per hour. Let's just say it's the wrong kind of protection. Did you bring protection? Sure did. The motion controller the DJI FPV can come with or you can buy separately is something not even the leaks could predict. It's quite revolutionary in the FPV industry and I like it a lot. And it's nice that you can have the emergency button at your fingertips. What's more, you also have the same 10 km range and a 300 minute battery life, which is not half bad. By the way, if you're a beginner, I do have a free pre-flight checklist down in the description you can download right now. Having an LED landing light means that this drone can be easily used in lower right areas or even at night sometimes. However, I must say I do like this mostly because of the coolness factor. I mean, you can make people wonder if you're flying a new F4 or something, which is pretty much as cool as life gets. Oh my god! Oh my god! Fortunately, you can edit your videos and share them directly from the app. I don't really plan to use it anytime soon. However, keep in mind that if you're just doing a video for social media that, that you need on a whim, this is much easier than taking all the footage from the microSD card to your computer, editing it, rendering and so on. You can record in both H.265 and H.264 when it comes to the recordings in the drone itself. However, the goggles only record in H.264, as expected. This and the fact that the camera does record in 120 megabits per second means the footage quality is quite impressive, as you can see. The DJI Virtual Flight app only supports iOS devices. When we're talking about the simulator, I forgot to tell you that currently, at the time of this video, you cannot actually play this if you have an Android phone, because I tried and it doesn't work. I will make a separate video as a guide on the simulator itself. In the app, you also have a feature that allows you to discover popular fly spots near you, if you're in China. For now at least. These locations are voluntarily shared by users like me and you on Skypixel. This could prove to be quite useful, however, since it's only available in China for now, we will have to wait for the app to update. It would help me a lot if you'd hit the like button, maybe leave a comment and subscribe if you like this content. I also 3D printed the DJI FPV drone before its release, so if you're curious how this entire process went, I suggest you check this video right here or my recommended video right here. Otherwise, again, check the description for all the important links that you might actually need, including other videos on the subject of the DJI FPV drone. See you later, alligator!